What's up? Uh, welcome. If you're here, I'm assuming you're from Twitter or something, and because of that, hello. Probably know who I am. If you don't, uh, you don't really have to give a fuck about who I am. I'm sorry, my voice doesn't sound the greatest. All you have to know is that I enjoy consuming media, manga, anime, music, books, whatever the fuck. I made this channel just so I could talk about shit impulsively, just like I did today. Uh, and this is something that I really want to talk about. Um, so I thought no better idea than to start off my channel with a top 10 manga list. Uh, I rate this based on enjoyment and enjoyment only. Personal resonation also uh, plays into that. Don't really give a shit about, you know, how well written it is. You essay merchants like to talk about that shit like it's the most important thing in the story. No, the fuck it's not. Rate your shit off enjoyment, man. That's how I feel. Uh, so yeah, I know a lot of fucking critics are gonna be like, why do you have certain series over a certain series? Calm down. Uh, this is my opinion. This is shit that I enjoy. You can enjoy something else, but whatever. So without further ado, uh, let's get into the honorable mentions. Ao Ashi, um, terrific soccer series, or football, whatever. Uh, Blue Period, Land of the Lustrous, uh, Flowers of Evil. I think they're all great series you should read. Barely made the cut, especially uh, Blue Period. Number 10, we have Yomori Sensei. Uh, I really don't know how to describe it, man. I think the best thing that it does for me is that it teaches me about life in a completely new perspective. It's not just some corny advice shit like just be yourself, but it approaches things from another perspective and I really appreciate that. A basic overview of the plot is that it's about this guy, Mizutani Sensei, who just goes around mentoring the troubled youth in Japan. It's really great. Um, there's a lot of meaningful lines, uh, a lot of life stories you can pick up. It's tragic, it's melancholic, but at the same time it's strangely hopeful. It teaches you about hope. It teaches you how beautiful that feeling can be. And I think that even though it's not even fully translated yet, it's been like 25 chapters out, something like that. It's the most meaningful, one of the most meaningful series I've ever read. Number nine, we have Doro Hedoro. Um, my favorite magic series to begin with. The series is fucking amazing. Uh, don't really know how to describe it, nor do you, nor will any readers of this series. It's completely new from any other fictional experience. I feel like Hayashida's art style just its out of this world, honestly. And it's nothing like any other mangaka out there. Even the world, the story, just the dynamics and the power system, it's all just its bizarre and it's something you wouldn't expect. It subverts everything, honestly. But it's done in such a way that it allows you to immerse in this super unique experience. And it's great. I don't think it has any important themes. It's just a story. It's fun. It's exciting. It has its emotional moments. It's carried by the story and the world, and that's all that matters. Number eight, we have Golden Ka. I don't really want to say the second word. Golden Kamui, something like that. I'll call it GK. Uh, it's really good as well. I don't know, I'm kind of bad at talking about this shit. I just repeat the same points, but it's a historical series, I'd say, with really unique cast. Very, very unique. They're also bizarre. Nothing like any other series, particularly the antagonists. They're actually like... I'd say this series has two of the best antagonists of all time, among one of them. There's Ogata. Fuck, I hate pronouncing Japanese names. There's two to me, whatever the fuck, but they're both amazing. Uh, both super well written. You love them a lot. Hijikata as well. He's just this raw samurai old dude. He says some pretty meaningful stuff sometimes and that's all that matters. Honestly, you just need to make a villain like villain. I think that's the best thing that GK is able to do. 
Noda is an expert in doing this shit. Writing to do uh, fuck man, whatever his name is, you'll see him on the screen. Uh, he is amazing. He doesn't have like a super tragic backstory. He's just a fucking crazy guy and manipulative, charismatic, just anything you would need from an antagonist. Not to mention the main cast is beautiful, it's amazing characters, character dynamics, the story and the depth in general of every arc and every minor character is just really unique. It's number seven, I believe, is Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko. Not a lot of people have read the series, surprisingly, from the people I know. It's a sci-fi series, it's very atmospheric, it's purely based on atmosphere. It doesn't really have any like super deep or layered story, it's just the main character chilling every single day, you know, doing everyday shit, but finding meaning in them. And that's what strikes me so much, it helps me find beauty in things that I often take for granted. It's beautiful, the art is amazing, it takes some time to get used to but it's amazing. There's fully colored chapters which are just, fuck man, they're so good. Purely atmospheric like I said, just read it in the morning or late at night with some lo-fi hip hop in the background, I guarantee you you'll love this shit. Number 6, we have Vagabond, I know people might be upset about this. Um. Inoue is my favorite manga of all time. Like, this series is one of the first manga I've ever read. Probably one of my first five I don't really remember. It's really good. It's critically acclaimed, so I'm sure a lot of people know about the shit I'm about to talk about. Yeah, it's just a philosophical samurai series. It's really good. It's well written. Has an amazing cast. Its art is charming. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. That's all I'd say. The fight scenes are raw, the emotional scenes are amazing, and just the story in general is one of the best, arguably the best, and a lot of people would agree with me here. Number 5 we have Slam Dunk, the shonen basketball series by Inoue Takehiko. It's amazing, I've reread it a bunch of times, probably will always be my favorite sports series of all time. I don't see that changing in the future. It's a fun series, it's a shonen. That's all you need, honestly. And you can really feel the soul of the series, man. Like, the characters, just their interactions. Um, Sakuragi, as a main character, who learns how to find passion in something that he never really had before. And the final moments, every single fucking time, dog. Every single time I read that final match, I just tear up at the end. It's amazing, it's amazing. I don't really know what else to say. The art progression is really good. It's, well, it's by the best manga of all time, so you wouldn't expect any less, but the series is amazing, man. So now we're approaching the top four. I think these four series are probably untouchable. I don't think my opinion on them will ever change. I think they mean so much to me that I'll always keep them at the top. Number four, we have Space Brothers. Um, there's an anime out for it, it's about 100 episodes, so you can go and watch that. I didn't though, because manga is much more accessible medium for me, but regardless, when you finish the anime, go and read the manga, because it has some of the most beautiful moments, man. I don't want to spoil it, nor am I going to put any panels of these moments, because I want people to actually go and read the shit and enjoy it, because this shit is so good, man teaches you about finding your dreams, obviously, has a bunch of characters, amazing cast by the way, that are all just fighting to overcome their vices, you know, things that prevent them from succeeding. It's horrifying at times, but it's also beautiful, and it communicates that perfectly. It has a very lovable main duo. These two brothers are probably one of my favorite character dynamics of all time. Coming in at number 3, it's a name I hate pronouncing. It's Usogui, I believe. I have no clue. By Sako Toshio. Not a lot of people talk about this series, and I think that's a... It's terrible that nobody really talks about it because it's so fucking good, man. Every person I know who's read this series has had it in at least their top 10, I feel. Or their top 5, arguably. The series is so good, man. It's The art progression is probably the best 
in all of manga. Just for a comparison, I have two spreads from early in the series and later in the series. I'm aware that it's、uh, 540 chapters. It might be a bit daunting to get started. Might even have a slow start, but it's so worth it, man. The cast is insane. I think Sako Toshio as a writer, insane, man. It's fucking crazy. The way he foreshadows everything and makes everything connect together in this very genuine and unpredictable way in general. Not to mention the gambling matches and the fights. So exciting. Emotional moments even are very emotional and very amazing. Baku as a main character and Kiruma as the main antagonist is probably my favorite character dynamic of all time, and you'll understand why if you read the series, man. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. There's nothing more I can say. It has its final two arcs, arguably the best arcs in fiction, I'd say. Top ten, both of them. For personally, they're top five. It's that good, man. Number two, we have Beck,、uh, Beck Mongolian Chop Squad to be specific.、Um, it's a music series. It's about this kid who finds his passion in music, joins a band, performs. They have aspirations, and I think it's so fleshed out. It's so real. It's cliche in moments that you want it to be cliche, and at the same time, it's tragic. It's harsh. It really realistically portrays the struggles of an up-and-coming band. Just trying to make it out, but once they do, it's so amazing, man. It's crazy because this is a manga. You can't even hear the shit that they're singing, but it's you just feel it, man. It's hard to describe, but once you read it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Art progression again, very good. If you want, you can、uh, watch the anime before reading the manga. That's what a lot of people say to do. I'm yet to do that, but I trust them. It's top two for a reason, man. Number one. In a manga by my favorite mangaka of all time, I believe it to be his best work. Inoue Takehiko's Real. It's an amazing character drama about people trying to overcome their struggles. It's centered around sports, so many people like me would appeal to it as a slam dunk fan. Its characters are so well written. Nomiya is my favorite character of all time, and will always be because the things he struggles with. Relate to me so much, man. The amount of times I cried, I smiled, I cried tears of joy even at things that happened in this series. There's just so much, dude. I could reread this for a whole year, honestly. This is how much this manga means to me. And I'm just talking about the main character Nomiya, but the other two main characters, Takahashi and Togoa, just as good. They're all three ten out of ten main characters. Imagine that. I don't think your favorite mangaka could ever do that. The art is amazing. It's stylistically defined. You can tell that it's an Inoue work. It's just, it's amazing. It's so good. Fuck, man. Now I want to reread it again. Every time I think about this series, I want to reread it again. That's how much I love it. Yeah, that's my top ten.、Um, thank you for watching. I don't know when I'm dropping another video.、Um, it's Christmas holiday soon, so I might soon. Hopefully, well, if I ever feel like it, then definitely. But hope y'all enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.、Um, if you're new, drop a sub, whatever. Don't leave a like. Don't whatever. Do what you want. I just hope you had a good time watching this. Peace.